You're watching the West Coast Logging Channel. Come on inside and get some logs, that is. I don't know, if you got enough skyline, I could probably just run down to that lift tree all the way down here. Oh yeah, I got lots of skyline. Well, let's just try that, Tyson. Let's see if I can pull it here. Oops, sorry, forgot the camera was on. <laughs> They're pulling the line out. 150 feet to go or something that's coming, though. Ah, how's everybody doing this bright, sunshiny morning? Man, I can't believe how nice it is. And it's been cold in the morning, like 18, 19 degrees. And then it turns out like this, 65 or better in the afternoons. God, it's so nice. So much better than rain all the time, I guarantee you that. I get used to this. It's gonna snow pretty soon, I know that. But it's the nice dry snow, and I know that sounds weird, but over in the valley we get that wet nasty sloppy snow and over here it's hard to make a a, a snowball because it's so dry it doesn't want to compact but anything's got to be better than rain all the time that's for sure but we're on the new job here just kicking butt lot well I'll get some some more video of it from over there but it's got big bare spots big pretty small wood too so it's yarding fast real fast poor old Johnny thinks he might have beaver fever I sure hope he doesn't I hope he just has some kind of a stomach flu or something because that beaver fever could be bad news my brother had it once and he was horribly sick for quite a while. Quite some time. We're pulling a lot of line. I like it though, it keeps my drum nice and clean. I like a clean drum. Anyway, so yeah, Tyson's been on Bell and Jokers for us this morning. He's getting ready to go do some sawing. Like I say, it's got such big bare spots in it, uh, and he only got, for a he, he only got like a two-day head start on it. So if he don't stay right busy on the saw, he's, we're gonna catch him in a hurry. So yeah, we'll get the uh, that new camera out on a tripod. We should get some really good uh, rigging videos out of it, and then Tyson's gonna take the little camera either on a chest pack or, or put a, a mount on his hard hat and take it falling with him so we can get some some more cutting videos for you guys but I, I blew a hose on the a big hose works my bucket and it just hydraulic fluid went everywhere I uh, dumped out 25 gallons of hydraulic fluid just like that but it reminded me of a uh, story time uh, I'm pulling here uh, thought maybe we'd do a little story time about some hydraulic fluid issues that I've seen another fellow have. We'll do it here in just a minute. Here's another really really good use for your hard hat if you don't want to eat your whole sandwich at one time you can use the rim of your hard hat to buck your sandwich in two. Okay ma'am? So anyways, back to story time. What the heck? I think Tyson's trying to sneak up on me. I see stuff flying. Anyways, back to the story time about the hydraulic fluid. I had a guy I worked with, the outfit I was working for, I was tending hook, and the uh, yarder engineer quit, or I ran him off or something. But anyway, so I was having to run yarder in, tend hook, it's being a real pain in the butt. Well, I had this guy call me that I'd worked with several times was looking for a job. Uh, he'd never ran yarder before, but it was, it was a pretty good logger and, and, you know, had plenty of experience out there. He just needed to, oh, I was like, and he was real meticulous about everything. Everything had to be perfect. And sometimes it was like, oh my God, it's good enough. Let's just go ahead on it. 
So I was like, well, I bet he'd make a really good yarder because he, 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 his image too, he had to keep a, you know, I'm a badass image. So I was like, well, he'd probably make a really good yarder here. And in fact, he actually did. He made a really good, uh, you know, because he was always made sure that he was smooth on the rig end and he was consistent, you know. But anyway, so I was teaching him what I could about running the order and working on it and whatnot. And we come up to, uh, I think it was Christmas, because we were going to be off for a few days. service on the machine. You know, change the oil, change the hydraulic filters, you know, do it. We couldn't, uh, we couldn't ship logs. We could log, but we could only deck so much, you know, before we had a decking room. So anyways, I was going to go rig a, a few trees and get ahead of ways while he was changing oil and stuff. bothers me that my knees don't work as well as they should. It takes me way too long to changes the oil and whatnot and I'm going up this tree and that landing that he's sitting on is oh, only a couple hundred feet down the road from me and I can actually almost see him I can see the yarder and I hear this cussing and going on and I was like oh no what happened and he was mad so I was just finishing this tree I come down out of the tree and I come walking up the road to see what was going on because he's still yelling and cussing and whatnot <laughs> well, he changed the motor oil, and he went to change the hydraulic filter. Well, like I said, it's a pressurized tank, and he didn't relieve the pressure. So, he's, and then the, the filter is set right on top of it. The tank is pointed up in the air, in fact. And so he uh, starts to get it loose.
air valve on it. So he starts spinning it off while it blows. And apparently, it was a 210 diamond, so it was a 49 foot boom. Apparently the filter went as high as the boom. Hydraulic filter. I mean, he is soaked. He is soaked from head to toe with hydraulic fluid. And he's mad at me because he thinks I set him up. And I'm like, you didn't relieve the pressure? And he's like, no, you didn't tell me to. And I'm like, well, we, we drain the air tank and we drain that tank, you know, the pressure off every night. When you get out, you shut it off, you climb down the ladder, you open up both of the air petcocks, you go around, you shut the battery switch off. Then you go do your carriage if, you know, you don't have a chase or whatnot. I go, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. And I honestly didn't do it on purpose. I thought that he knew that he would have to, to relieve the pressure on that system before he took the filter off. Oh my God, it was, <laughs> I mean, he had hydraulic fluid. He was so, and it ended up taking us like 20 gallon, I think, to refill the tank because it blew everywhere. And the whole back of the yarder, you know, like I say, he's meticulous. He keeps his cab clean. He did a really good job running yarder. Really good. He did a good job out in the brush, but he did a really, really good job running yarder. Now he's got hydraulic fluid everywhere, up on the deck. He's got it up on his sunroof. Oh God! And yeah, I know a lot of my stories. You've got to, you got to be there to really appreciate it. But if you just see me, oh man, this guy was—he was mad to me. So after I, I got him. To understand that I, you know, I didn't do it on purpose. That I thought he knew it was a pressurized system. Then it was funny, and I started laughing. And he's like, "It's not funny at all." And I'm like, "Oh no, it's absolutely funny." <laughs> so we put the filter back on the tank. Get the hydraulic fluid in it. Well, I'd taken enough rigging out that I was going to do three or four lift trees, you know, to get ahead. Because you never know when one of your rigging crew isn't going to show up and you're going to have to spend the day out on the rigging and that puts me behind. So I always tried to stay as head, as, you know, as far ahead as I could just for those situations. So I'm like, he's like, well, I'm ready to go. I got to go change my clothes. So, I made him. We'll be right back. Sorry, I know I keep stuff, but I don't want to. Takes time to shut the camera off and all that. And I can't be, uh. Can't be wasting time making videos. Everything's, 
depressurized and shut off and it's not too hot, it's not too cold. Stay safe, get logs, friends. You know what we haven't talked about in quite a while? And being over here, it'd probably be a good time to talk about it again, is rigging eaves. And that is what I call the terminology that loggers use for the product or, or for the, the whatever they're using, you know, whether it be a rigging chain or a, a coupler, you know, or, or when you're out on the rigging and, and you, you got get that bonus and Chinese tag or, or you know, and, and I honestly believe that one of the hardest parts about breaking in logging is the terminology that's used you know, because a new guy, he's not going to know what a Marlins bike is, you know, unless he's been around it or a, a coupler or anything like that. So, and being over here, there's quite a few things that it's the same thing, but they use a different term for it. Like our log trucks back home, if they come back and get a late load and can't get dumped, we call them holdovers over here they call them holdouts and like we you know we have rigging slingers and hook tenders well they just have hookers and uh, you know little things like that 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 it's exactly the same thing just different terminology it, it, it's funny you know when you go somewhere else like up to Canada or Alaska or whatever you know and the terminology is different from place to place to place and, and it's just kind of um, funny how this one thing can have so many different terms used to describe it or, or to name it. And, uh, you know, even, even with as many years of experience as I have, to come over here and, and like I say, you know, it's a different terminology. So at first I'm like, what? And then, oh, okay, yeah. And, and still, like, like I call them, changing roads and they call it changing lines and uh, they, uh, to me pulling a turn in like I'm right now they call it uh, pulling a drag I got one more drag left just you know funny stuff like that at the end of the day it's all you know all the same it's all longer stay safe boys get logs come on